Ah, the prophet of Islam. Slave trader, child rapist, wife beater, greatest man in history, according to the revelations his narcissistic mind came up with. PP asks, you keep saying he beated his wife. Can you please give me sources for this? I don't mean to poo-poo on your parade, PP, but yes, I can. I'll give you Sahih Muslim 2127, and I'll include the link in the description box so you can read it over and over and over again. In Sahih Muslim 2127, Muhammad sneaks out of Aisha's house in the middle of the night. Aisha doesn't trust him. Can't blame her for that. The guy was a total freak. Who knows what he was doing when he snuck out of the house in the middle of the night. So she follows him in order to keep an eye on him. After he heads home, she runs ahead and gets home before him and pretends to be asleep. But he hears her breathing heavily from running. So he decides to teach her who's boss. Let's read the passage. Muhammad ibn Qais said to the people, Should I not narrate to you a hadith of the Holy Prophet on my authority and on the authority of my mother? We thought that he meant the mother who had given him birth. He, Muhammad ibn Qais, then reported that it was Aisha who had narrated this. Should I not narrate to you about myself and about the messenger of Allah, yada, yada, yada? We said, yes, she said, when it was my turn for Allah's messenger, yada, 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 to spend the night with me, he turned his side, put on his mantle, and took off his shoes and placed them near his feet, and spread the corner of his shawl on his bed, and then lay down till he thought that I had gone to sleep. He took hold of his mantle slowly and put on the shoes slowly and opened the door and went out and then closed it lightly. I covered my head, put on my veil and tightened my waist wrapper and then went out following his steps till he reached Baki. He stood there and he stood for a long time. He then lifted his hands three times and then returned and I also returned. He hastened his steps and I also hastened my steps. He ran and I too ran. He came to the house, and I also came to the house. I, however, preceded him, and I entered the house. And as I lay down in the bed, he, the holy prophet, entered the house and said, Why is it, O Aisha, that you are out of breath? I said, There is nothing. He said, Tell me, or the subtle and the aware would inform me. I said, Messenger of Allah, may my father and mother be ransom for you. And then I told him the whole story. He said, was it the darkness of your shadow that I saw in front of me? I said, yes. He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain, and then said, did you think that Allah and his apostle would deal unjustly with you? He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Number 273, Narrated Jarir, Allah's Apostle did not screen himself from me since my embracing Islam, and whenever he saw me he would receive me with a smile. Once I told him that I could not sit for him on horses, he stroked me on the chest with his hand and said, and quat, O Allah, make him firm and make him a guiding and a rightly guided man, and quat the Above hadith shows as evidence that the Prophet would lahaza, meaning press the chest of someone, in order to perform the miraculous ability to remove doubt or negative thoughts. This is what the Prophet did to Aisha when he pressed her chest. It was to use the miraculous ability he possessed to remove negative thoughts or doubts from Aisha's mind. Additionally, Aisha herself reports that Muhammad saw has never beat a woman and was the best of men in the hadith. Thus the hadith in which you are quoting was not a hit to cause Aisha pain, but one of the miraculous healing factors in which Muhammad uses to remove doubt by pressing or pushing the chest of someone. As found in Bukhari Volume 4 Book 52 Number 273. Thus Muhammad and Quat Lahaza and Quat pushed or pressed his hands on Aisha's chest to heal her from her negative doubts not as an act of punishment to use, force or pain to discipline her and while the hadith does mention that the press caused her pain, a deed is judged by its intent and since the intent was not to cause pain but to heal her from negative thoughts then it is not valid to say that Muhammad was abusive. Rather, he was of the best of men.